Senator Wayne Schmidt from the 37th District of the State of Michigan. He is also the chair of the K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee. Joining us now on the Megacast, Senator Schmidt, thank you for being with us. Tyler, good to be on 89.3 Lakes FM and uh, talk about school funding. Yeah, we're glad to have you with you. How are you? Have you with us? How are you? How's your team? Uh, the team is good. Uh, they're socially distanced and uh, working mostly from home, although I usually have one person go into the office uh, per day and I'll be heading down to Lansing uh, later tonight. I am in Traverse City where I live and just doing lots of phone calls, Zoom interviews and trying to keep it all together. And there's, a, there's a lot to work through right now. K, K through 12 yes. education, the funding for these schools, it's absolutely critical. The schools have been really working very well and and education has been thriving in the state of Michigan for several years now and now we're in a situation yes. where we're in a financial crisis and there's going to be some sort of cuts you are uh, you we mentioned you are the chairperson of the K12 appropriations committee and, and people are worried right now educators are worried about the future of our schools uh, the consensus yes. revenue estimating conference estimated that 1.2 billion a 1.2 billion dollar cut will be made to this school year's school aid fund and 1.1 billion dollars to next year's fund it's about an estimate from the Detroit News of approximately $600 per per student how is that determined how is that allocated in this kind of a situation well it, it's current and you were right thank you for giving a little history michigan came off the great recession double dip worse than any other state in the union in terms of job loss revenue to state coffers i mean it was devastating. There was nothing. There was no Republican or Democratic plot. In any of the, you know, there's a lot of garbage out there on the internet and on Facebook and social media. Uh, we were finally starting to turn the corner, getting people back to work, incomes rising. I mean, not always fast enough. I grant you that. Still, a lot of challenges, but we were finally turning the corner. Uh, we've had increased spending the last several years, and then COVID hits. Tough part is 1.2 billion dollars. Initially, when we were looking at that budget and talking uh, to the press earlier, we thought it was going to be worse. Uh, not that $1.2 billion isn't a huge, huge cut, but I mean, we, we thought it was going to be closer to $8 billion rather than the approximate $6.2 billion we're short. So uh, it's, it's a small saving grace. And let me state, you know, as a, as a parent of two teenage high school students, mom's a retired teacher, I've com I was committed to improving funding for education. However, people aren't buying cars. They're not buying appliances. They're not going out to eat. They're not working as much. So sales tax revenue down, income tax revenue down. We've delayed collection of taxes till July 15th. All of these, along with this deadly virus, and I feel for the folks in Southeast Michigan and specifically Detroit, we up north, Northern Lower Michigan and the Upper Peninsula want to get back to work, want to get things going so that we can help our fellow Michiganders. But doing that, it's going to take some time. So the cuts that we have to make are done by statute. There is a reduction because it's the current year. We're short $1.2 billion. How we're going to do it, we're not completely sure. Uh, I, I am not making this decision in a vacuum. I talk with school administrators and their association superintendents and their association, teachers and their teachers unions, uh, parent groups, talking to all of them. The common message I've heard is one, do as little damage to the per pupil foundation as possible. So that's the greatest amount of money with the greatest amount of flexibility. Two and three, they're, they're combined and they're actually not a ranking, but rather the four main things. Two and three, special education, special needs students, and those at risk, students at risk. And then the last is make sure that the physical and mental well-being of our students, so things like student health clinics, try to do as few cuts to those as possible. Those are the four main areas, and that's what we're looking at. We had the May Revenue Estimating Conference. I think before we do any final budgets and presentations uh, in July, we're going to wait again to see how the numbers continue to shake out if they get a little better. But one thing I can tell you is we're not banking on any federal aid. If it happens, I've been lobbying uh, our congressional delegation, our federal legislators, but who knows what's gonna happen in Washington, DC? Who knows when it's going to happen? 
and what strings will be attached. So we can't bank on that. So the, the tough part is this isn't a Republican or Democratic thing. This isn't the legislature or the governor. The fact is the revenue is not coming in. We cannot deficit spend. We have an obligation under state law and state constitution to have a balanced budget. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah, uh, Senator Wayne Schmidt, thanks again for being here with us. Uh, Erica Jones, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering, so yeah. you said that you were planning on a budget cut of closer to, what, $8 billion, which is, you know, crazy. So that's Well, that's the overall... Uh, reduction that was a that was the guesstimate early on for entire state revenues it is now closer to 6.2 billion and of that about two and a half billion dollars is k-12 related <clears throat> so, so that's how much we have to cut over this current year and next year so take, take us through some of that process that, that you go through with the approach appropriation K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee. Mm -hmm. how, how does your committee determine how funding is allocated, what what needs to be cut where, how does that how are those decisions made, what pr step of the process are you and your team currently in? We're currently in right now looking at the fiscal year 1920, 2019, 2020, the current budget year we're in, which will end October 1st, and then we kick into the new budget. We're just, we have to go through and just make cuts. Um, one of the things we've done is, and my, my sons are active in robotics, but any of the unspent monies, now that total line item in that budget was approximately, I think about $5 million. Clearly not, not anywhere close to 1.2 billion, but we'll use that as a, as a starting point. So any of the uh, tournaments that did not happen, any of the expenses that weren't incurred by school districts, robotics groups, we're just taking that money back and, and trying to place it into next year or minimize you know the cuts for the 2020 2021 budget so that's an example of what we've done um we're still going to make payments to the districts but they will probably be less um we're looking at any um i don't well everything in education we felt in last year's budget was necessary from the standpoint of it, it offered benefits to students now we have to rank those students, those um, the benefits of each one. So that's what we're going through. And I wish I could tell you we have not gone through and made any specific cuts yet. Uh, that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. But like I said, I've been getting input from a variety of groups. One area that I, I they didn't get an increase in next year's budget, but I held them pretty consistent as to where they were in this year's budget. Were for example the school-based health clinics. Because we know that if, especially with this crisis for the mental health of our students, the physical well-being of our students, that if they're not feeling good, both mentally and physically, they're not going to learn. They're not going to be able to make up in, uh, in late summer and then be able to start the school year in earnest if they're not feeling good physically and mentally. So, so as of now, no... No cuts have been officially made in, in any general no. area, but the Correct. schools should be ready and, and parents and, and students should be ready to, to, to shoulder those cuts as they do come in because they, they're coming one way or another. Uh, without right. any official word just yet or any official decisions being made, what are some areas that may, that may uh, in the K-12 education funding that may see these cuts that, that you're currently discussing or that you believe will, will likely end up being uh, – well, a lot, some of the extracurricular type funding, as I said, robotics, some of those type of, of things, uh, the per pupil foundation cut, you're probably looking between six and seven hundred dollars a student. And that's that's, you know, originally we were looking at worst case that it was much it was going to be much higher. Again, any cut going backwards is not good. So it's that's. You, you just can't help it because that is the largest part of the budget is the foundation. And I, I, wish I, I wish I could say, oh, I'll just eliminate this one line item and it'll be all set. It, it can't happen. And we do remember uh, this is obligation under, the, under state law and the state constitution. Myself and the appropriations overall chairman, Senator Jim Stamas, 
We're committed to closing the gap, the 2X funding gap. I know you're from, from downstate and a number of the schools are, are funded uh, higher than, than many of the Northern Michigan schools. We don't wanna take away from that, but we were just trying to get all schools up to that level. That's gonna have to be put on hold. The commitment was there by the legislature that as the economy improved, we were going to spend more money on education, whether it's in Southeast Michigan, West Michigan, up North, the UP, wherever. So it's those kind of things. Increases in the next year's budget, gone. There won't be any. That's, that's an example of how we're unfortunately having to, to cut back. I, I, I don't have specifics right now other than school districts need to be ready to um, see a per pupil decrease. It's, you know, again, we can't bank on the federal government. As I said, I've talked to congressional, uh, our congressional leaders, uh, I've talked to their staff, but you know who knows what the House, the Senate, the President are going to do. And this this is not something uh, that we can just bury our head in the sand and, and hope that it all arrives. We're we're you know I'm an eternal optimist, but as a legislator, I have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. It's tough. It's a tough situation. You got a very yeah. tough road ahead, and a lot of t and a lot of really tough decisions that have to be made. Joining us right now, Senator Wayne Schmidt, se state senator from the 37th district. He's also the chair of the K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee. Joining us, we'll take a quick pause for station identification. You're listening to us on 89.3 WBLD, Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, 88.1 WBFH, Bloomfield Hills, 88.1 WBFH, The Biff, and 89.5 WAHS Auburn Hills. That's WAHS 89.5 Avondale Community Radio as well as Civic Center TV, Birmingham Area Municipal Access Television, and on the Facebook page of Oakland University. Uh, so Senator Wayne Schmidt, you, you had mentioned that there are differences in funding per pupil for, per pupil funding is gonna be impacted, but there's also funding that is impacted from municipalities and from local areas. So in Southeastern Michigan, yeah. some schools are funded bet are funded better because of their tax base than they are mm -hmm. in, in some school districts that are on in, in s Southwestern Michigan or in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, from the appropriation standpoint, from a budgeting standpoint, is there anything that the legislature, that your subcommittee, that uh, general appropriations can do, in, especially in a crisis like this where a general financial hit hits a school district with less with less tax based funding upstate a lot more than it does a, a financially well well to do school district in southeastern Michigan. How do you help right. to bridge that gap when you're making these budget that's, decisions? That's what we're looking at because I get it. <clears throat> I mean, there's always been a little bit of competition fight. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I mean, I get growing up in Traverse City, living here, I get that southeast Michigan has traditionally been the economic engine and there's been more uh, tax base and, and revenue generated down there than Northern Michigan and the Upper Peninsula. I don't want to uh, disparage any of that. But it is it is tougher, especially when you hear a lot of downstate folks saying, well, you know, every student is equal. Well, we're going to get there and we're trying not to, to uh, hurt the, the districts downstate either. So we're going to look at it. I don't want to say that there's going to be a 2x reverse in terms of cuts. That's, you know, I mean, there are lots of things talked about. But as I said, we're really going to try to do as little damage, as, as few cuts as possible to that per pupil foundation grant, because that's the one that the schools, that the superintendents, the administrators, the principals, the teachers have much more say in flexibility in how they want to educate their students. I want to add that I'm also the uh, chair of the uh, transportation appropriations budget. So that's fun, and serve on the Department of Human Health and Human Services budget. Uh, that one's chaired by Senator Pete McGregor from Rockford, uh, uh, Grand Rapids suburb. And all three of those budgets, critical. All three are going to see huge decreases in revenue because the economy has just stalled out, uh, has gone backwards. And again, I'm not blaming this on on Governor Whitmer or any of any of my colleagues on either side of the aisle, this is a function of this uh, horrible virus that's, as I said, really hit Southeast Michigan, Detroit specifically, in a devastating way. Um, the question is, is how do we move forward from it? How do we get things opened up a little bit more? And again, I want to be very clear about this. 
nobody, and as I said, there's a lot of garbage out on the internet and social media, nobody is putting profits or tax revenue ahead of people, nobody. But we do need to get things moving a little bit. And if we can get some of the economy started, whether it's in Southeast Michigan, West Michigan, Northern or the Upper Peninsula, everyone is willing to do their part. Uh, I heard when you were talking with your earlier, your previous guest, and we're all in this together, as you were saying, if we can get some tax revenue going, if we can get people feeling a little bit better, if people continue to, as we reopen the economy, take safe and prudent measures. Um, you know, if you're feeling sick, don't go out, wear a mask, some simple things. We can, we can start to, to take the fight back and, uh, we're willing to work with whoever, whenever, how to, and how to do this, but it's, we're all in it together. Senator Wayne Schmidt of Michigan's 37th District, he's the chairperson of the K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee as well. We're talking about education funding and, and the potential for uh, significant cuts coming forward. Uh, so education, of, of course, you're the subcommittee chair per, chairperson for the K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee. Education's an issue that you very much hold dear to hold dear and, and you care a lot about yeah. um, just based on your communication with other members of the legislature with other people in the state government as well uh, I just want I just want to ask you on, on this we recently had Avondale schools as superintendent dr. James Schwartz on with us and he said and he argued that computers are as vital as pencils and paper in today's academic landscape is with virtual learning being the current status quo during this qu crisis and potentially going to ha play a bigger role in schools going forward as we come out of this and we approach our new normal. Has there been any chatter within the state government, within other people that hold education really dear in, in their, in their uh, political circles as far as provide bridging up the technology gap in our schools and providing computer compu access to computers, better access to broadband for those that are not able to access it so they can kind of in some ways, like we spoke of before, even the playing field in our educational systems. Mm -hmm. yeah, there will be. I think that distance learning, online learning is going to play a, a bigger role. We've seen some examples of how they do that down in Florida because of the hurricane season so that there's been some advancements. There's definitely differences in schools and how they were prepared for it. Uh, some districts in northern Michigan, some in southeast Michigan, wherever were better prepared than other districts uh, in, in, uh, throughout the state. But I think one of the key things that we've learned from this is that we need to make sure every house is connected. And whether that we uh, do that uh, through something like the uh, REA programs of the 1930s, the Rural Electrification Act, something like that. We're seeing improvements there. We need to put more money into that. I don't think that distance learning, online learning is going to completely replace schools. I think you do need that physical contact, the interaction between teachers and students and, and students themselves. Uh, I think that's a much healthier and better learning environment, but a, a component will be distance or online learning uh, that can help reinforce and or if the bat, you know, we had a lot of snow days the last couple of years, especially up north, although downstate you get you get some bad weather too. I think it'll be a, it'll be a good mix. We're going to learn from that. Hats off to all the teachers, administrators, support staff that have been doing everything from making sure it's little things. My, my one son, my freshman in high school gets postcards. He's doing the uh, online learning and communicating with teachers and such. They miss him, he misses school, his teachers, his friends, but it's little touches like they're still sending postcards out. Um, the, all the uh, diet, diet, dietitians, the, the food service workers getting meals out every day and every couple of days, depending on where you're at and helping students you know, maintain nutritional standards. Uh, bus drivers who are working as hotspots, especially up north here or getting uh, for those students that don't have the online capability, making sure that they're getting their packets delivered. It's, it's amazing. And I think we're seeing a lot of experimentation on what works, what doesn't work. So that maybe late this summer, when we look at how we're gonna get students back into the classroom, how we're gonna do some catch up work, make sure that they're, that, you know, this, these last couple of months, these last two months in the summer is gonna, we're gonna see some loss of, of learning.
but we'll get students back up to speed late summer and then hopefully get them into the classroom, you know, and start firing on all eight uh, come this fall. And like you said, you're an, you're an eternal optimist, and so are we at the, at, mm-hmm. at this operation. And Good. it's take it's taken a long time for even Ken Gutman from the Wald Lake School District said at this point in time they were just getting out from under the financial struggles of 2008. Yeah. And there there's efforts being put in. Our economy was strong going in, but before this crisis, and hopefully will continue oh. to be strong afterward. And if that's the case, with the focus that yourself and your colleagues in Lansing have on education and continuing to make our education system in Michigan thrive as it has been. We'll hopefully be back at the place we were at before this crisis very soon and be able to move forward. I think the next 18 months are going to be difficult, but we'll get there. Uh, There's going to be some changes, but we'll get there. Senator Wayne Schmidt from Michigan's 37th district. Anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? Hey, the folks, I, I represent all of Grand Travers, Antrim, Charlevoix, Emmett, Sheboygan, Cross the Bridge, Mackinac, Chippewa, and Moose Counties, Traverse City to the Sioux. We're looking forward that people are coming up to their summer homes, their cottages, their camps. You know, we just ask that they be safe, take a few extra steps, wear your mask, wash your hands a lot. We're, we're going to do the same <clears throat> so that we can welcome, <clears throat> excuse me, that wasn't a COVID cough, um, just we, you know, if everyone takes the proper precautions, we'll learn to adapt to this. We'll get a vaccine in the next year or so. We'll get better ways to treat. We just all have to get to, you know, stand together. We're Michiganders. That's what we do. And uh, we'll get through it. Yes, we will. Thank you very much for being with us. Senator Wayne Schmidt from Michigan's 37th District. Thank you very much. Thank you.